What can you do when your mind goes blank as soon as you sit down to take a test and your mind stays blank? This happens to more people more often than you might think. Now I'm not talking about not knowing the material on the test. I'm not talking about the time I spent the whole night before a history exam putting a chronological list of the U.S. presidents to the tune of My Country Tis of Thee. It went like this. Washington, Adams, Jefferson, Madison, Monroe, John Quincy. Yeah, I got five extra points for listing all the U.S. presidents in order, but I hadn't learned any of the definitions for the multiple choice questions. That was, obviously, a case of being unprepared. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when the information I've studied for weeks and practiced in the ILC just disappears from my brain as I read the first question. Most likely because I'm so anxious that I can't concentrate, can't focus, I can't stay with the test. Perhaps I'm thinking about how I'll fail this test, how hard this subject is, how the instructor doesn't understand me, how much I need this course to get my degree, how I may never graduate because I'm so stupid, how I'll never get the job I want. In other words, feeding the discursive thought that feeds my anxiety, that blurs my concentration, that shuts down my mind so that I can't access knowledge that is truly stored in my memory bank. What do I do then? I have found techniques that work for students, so I'll share. One thing you can do is take one minute to focus on something completely different from the test. Now don't begrudge this one minute. Even on a time test, one minute is nothing in the grand scheme of things if your mind isn't working. So take one minute to focus on any item on your desk. It doesn't have to be anything unusual, something that's permissible to have out on your desk during the test, like a water bottle. I carry around glass water bottles made by the Voss company, for example. Say I'm in a classroom. The exam is on my desk, and it might as well be written in hieroglyphics because I've totally lost focus. So I take a minute to examine this common object, my water bottle. It has a gray top, the letters VOSS, V-O-S-S, -S, run vertically up the bottle. Tiny print spells out artisan water from Norway. I smile because I have long since drunk the artisan water from Norway. Now it looks classy, but it's Wake Tech water from the filtered water fountain. Next, the water bottle reminds me of my student Mia, who made me promise never to drink out of plastic water bottles again because she read about the chemicals that can seep into certain plastics when they get hot. She said, I don't want you to die, Miss Eleanor. See how I let my mind carry me where it wanted to go for just one minute. I could have added my other thoughts about how I had never listened to my husband who hated to spend money on anything, much less free water, but I won't go there. The goal is to de-stress after all. But changing our focus like this for just a minute can reset our attention. For one minute, I haven't been thinking about how I'll fail this test, how hard this subject is, how the instructor doesn't understand me, how much I need this course to get my degree, how I may never graduate because I'm so stupid, how I'll never get the job I want. In other words, feeding the discursive thought that feeds my anxiety, that blurs my concentration, that shuts down my mind so that I can't access knowledge that is truly stored in my memory bank. I have been thinking about a water bottle and a great former student. After a moment like that, you can redirect your attention to the test.